Okay, now that we're back from our break from lunch, thank you guys for all coming. Hope that you had a pleasant lunch and uh, learned something from each other. As we're here all together learning from each other. I learn from you, you learn from me. And it's about that learning process and the camaraderie and the joinder with that and peace within that that you find your networking. Um, one of the things that I want to make sure that everybody comprehends is the, the, the volition of why I'm giving closure on this day is to maintain the rules of the continuance of the evidence of the corporate charter that has been placed, put into place that I have became, become accountable for the solitary performance uh, to give closure to those who wish to join as tenants with the structure that's been in, put in place. So I'm maintaining those rules of the continuance of evidence under the 45-day trust moratorium I gave my three-day notice to the world. Uh, I gave closure to the, that this meeting was going to happen, and the sh this is a, a shareholders. There'll be a summary on this shareholders meeting, uh, and we'll, we'll publish that. You guys will all be witnesses to that because you are all witnesses. It, you can only be a witness here to that if you have a claim of the life. Let me clarify. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 We have six of us with a claim of the life. So we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that. You guys are just witnesses to this shareholders meeting. I'm holding a shareholders meeting here today. So I just kind of wanted to bring that into uh, full closure for anyone that would watch this, that uh, the 12B7, which is the joinder, the 12B6, which is the statement of the claim, the 12B5, which is uh, the service of the methods, and the 12B4 is the methods of the service. The 12B, what that means is Closure was given to the U.S. Department of State for foreign missions because I am a, a this is a legate federal document, uh, document contract federal postal court trial, and I'm here as a special uh, ambassador, ambassador for closure of the global postal uh, world corporation construct uh, for the servicing of our functions and giving closure to that. So the United States Department of State, and I've autographed their stamp, have more than three-day notice on this on July 5th, 2018. I did not have to notify the Postal Service because I took tactical command control, and I am the Postal Service, and the Postal Station is wherever I'm at. Same with the World Banking System. It's wherever I'm at because I control all the charters for all the banks on the planet and all the courts on the planet. And the other closure that did not have to happen was I didn't have to give it to the U.S. military because I'm functioning in my role as Commander-in-Chief. Uh, the second closure that was given was to David Eiffel and Colin Miller's family. I've autographed the bill of the lighting for the service of the methods and method of service, which is 12B4 and 12B5. The venue was set through the publication that went out. You guys just all received a, a digital copy, uh, which is the uh, the venue was the Title IV the Title IV Correct Communication Parsi Syntax Grammar Flag, and the uh, Leggett. Document contract, federal postal court service, federal court venue performance flag. Otherwise known grandfathering in as the Title IV 101.9 dimension flag. The fee was paid for freight with the $1 stamp in compliance with Title 46, 190, 191, 193, 194. And we are, the endorsement has been placed on the back because I disqualified the U.S. military postal system. I have my own Federal Postal Military Postal Service station on file, so the endorsement's there. I've autographed and I've fingerprinted that for my Federal Postal, and anybody can come and witness that stamp, and you guys can all take witness on that stamp. Uh, those stamps were registered in all theaters for the U.S. military, from the Indian Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean to the Baltic Seas to the Pacific Ocean and the different uh, navigational locations on planet Earth. So my stamp is on file with them uh, through Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, and then the evidence is all bonded and attached, is which, what we're going over with here on the trial. And the summons and the classroom file setting was put in place, uh, which you all have got a cover page on that as well, which has the topics of the seminar. We've covered the Generation Virilities contract, and now we're going into the uh, Global Postal Union shareholders meeting on the uh, 6th of August, 2018, uh, which is Corporation RR876462118.
US, which is my copyright grammar lease for 300 years. And if anybody on the, else on the planet has a copyright uh, authorization from David Eiffel and Miller, at this time I'm giving publication to bring it forward within with a 10-day closure. Uh, but I know what it takes to, so, okay. So this contract, how did I come about this contract, which, which is the copyright authorization for me to use the correct communication Farsi syntax grammar as the only person on planet Earth with a solitary contract from David for copyright release on the technology for the correct communication Farsi syntax grammar. The way this came about was in uh, 2000, and this meeting was August 6th, August of 2005. On December 12th, 2004, uh, I went into the Pentagon looking for my office as Postmaster General uh, because they had signed a lease with me for the flag back in February of 2003. So I waited my one year, or I waited my 45-day uh, trust moratorium and went, walked into the Pentagon looking for my office. I figured I needed to go in there and give them all a download on, on the correctness. And uh, I was met by a couple SWAT teams, of course. And of course, I asked for their flag duty officer front and center and started of walking them through the, the, the mechanics of flag protocol in compliance with Army regulation 840 10 212 and in compliance with Title 36, Section 176, Subsection G, and in compliance with Title 4, Sections 1, 2, and 3, under flag movements for vessels in and out of the foreign vessel and dry dock. Um, they escorted me off the property, which my contract at that point became null and void. I then started conducting a military court martial against over 500 documented, this is all documented, every 45 day trust they would put Apache helicopters, Chinook helicopters above my head with video cameras on it as well as 20 video cameras at the location at the Washington Obelisk in Washington DC on the ley line because I'm a key master at the Vatican and I have authorization to use specific ley lines just like I'm functioning on David's vertical which we learned on the last contract, Dave's uh, vertical stagnant position now for, for, for him or anybody trying to use his energy. So um, conducted a military court marshalling. I alerted all forts and bases. There's a difference between forts and bases. And I conducted a military, I was working with the US Navy SEALs. I conducted a military duty post for 90 days where we ran a ship's log and held a duty post location for ship's papers and filed a a A1 conducted an AWOL trial for all the people that didn't show up at the Washington Obelisk. This is all documented. It's highly classified, but we're, we're getting out. I can unclassify this for this specific relevance to this setting up this story about how I came about the copyright release. The FBI was deep undercover with me right there uh, during that time frame. Uh, I am the thief mentor of the largest silica and gold mine on the planet. Uh, gold underneath, silica on top. Um, we have 55 million tons of silica. It is, uh, and it's very clean. So it's uh, running 999 to, uh, 9995 to 9998. So it depends on, you know, and we can clean it up to three nines with some chemical washing. It's not a problem on that part and the AU underneath. Anyway, the uh, FBI was deep undercover with me uh, through HBC Bank out of Hong Kong, and we were, we were looking at monetizing this asset. So the FBI was there, this is all documented. Uh, we, the FBI agents all had claims of life with me. Uh, we did a, on the summer solstice of 2007, uh, we had a sarcophagus burial for those contracts uh, conducted um, on South Pass, Wyoming. Uh, the Jesuits uh, uh, from the Jesuit generals out of the Vatican showed up on my front doorstep over that. This is all classified in closure, but I'm unclassifying it for the relevance of this case. Um, this probate, uh, or this look at case here that we're conducting today. Um, so, in this court marshalling, I sent note of publication to my shareholder, David Hyphen Wing Colin Miller. And lo and behold, when the green card returned, a dog, a tom, or a paw 
or a David Wynn Miller adjective adjective pronoun boarded the vessel. Well, there's no such thing as a David Wynn Miller without punctuation because I have a claim of the life as we all saw at the very beginning today. So because a, a fiction boarded the vessel and what he told me is that he was upset because the Clintons were upset about what I was doing and he was under contract with the Clintons and the Rothschilds to do it, give them the grammar to educate the top 1% of the world so that they could not perform for everybody else. So the bad guys or their performance, I'm not going to call them bad guys, their performance was using grammar to create a scenario to cause chaos for people that went under contract with these people. And I would not be a part of that, but this is the reason why he boarded the vessel as an adjective pronoun. So when we got together in August, on August uh, 5th uh, of that year for our shareholders meeting, I questioned and was looking for this adjective, adjective pronoun, this David Owen Miller. Uh, the FBI was there and it got violent. I'm going to be real honest with the world. There was a fight, an actual, because I know what it takes to get, you know, get anything. So, as a collector, I moved forward with my authorizations to collect. Well, if you'll witness on the first contract of the original shareholders meeting, he had copyright release. Remember, he was not a postmaster general, which we learned earlier today. He was the copyright release on things, or copyright leaseholder, right? He, he could authorize who could use the technology and who couldn't. That's why you'd never get copyright released to anybody, so you couldn't ever collect. Okay, so I turn around and we got in a fist fight. The FBI was there, and as I'm literally beating David up, and this is physical, no doubt. You know, banking is tough love, for sure. Uh, as I'm as I'm putting the boots to him, he's looking at the FBI coming off the ground, going, "See, he's ready for banking now." And I mean, I'm just lighting him up, boom, decking him and dropping him, and I kind of felt bad. Because, you know, he's my friend, you know, and we're in, we're in this fist fight. Uh, the witnesses there were uh, federal hyphen judge Melvin hyphen Edward Colin Gustin, who is the definite federal judge, not a fake one. Federal hyphen judge Alice hyphen Lee Colin Gustin. Federal hyphen judge Robert hyphen Ross Colin Hanahan. And shareholder Gordon hyphen James Colin Gunch. Uh, Robert hyphen Ross Colin Hanham sits at the seat of the judgment against the Department of Interior and the Bureau of Land Management in a case out of Casper, Wyoming, which he won in federal court and became a federal judge. Melvin hyphen Edward Colin Gustin and Alice hyphen Lee Colin Gustin became federal judges in their lawsuits against the Department of Interior and the Bureau of Land Management as well as uh, another former judge in Wyoming, who's, I'm going to keep his name classified at this time. Um, and they are federal judges. They have, they, they, what that means is they could walk and shoot bubblegum at the same time, knew about the grammar, and could order the courts open and walk in and get judgments autographed like I have from the clerk of courts. But these are not federal judges that just jump out there and take cases. These, these are federal judges that, that control their own worlds and use their, their, their condition of performance to be judges and judge themselves. These are judges that know what they're doing. You know, there's, there's not a lot of advertisement because the people that know use it for, for good for their lives. And I give them high honor. Uh, and Robert hyphen Ross Colin Haddenham, uh, he passed on. Uh, but uh, Melvin hyphen Edward Colin Gustin and uh, Alice hyphen Lee Colin Gustin, uh, they, they deserve much honor because they have been in the fight a long time, and they have judgments themselves, for themselves, and have proved it to themselves, and to them as federal hyphen judges, for I concur with the mechanics of how you moved your vessels, claimed your cargoes, and moved from point A to point B. It's done correct through 12B7 through 12B1. They know what that means, and, they, and they've authenticated it over and over again. So they were there witnessing this fist fight. So as Dave finally comes off the ground, he goes, all right, he says, I'm, I'm giving up copyright release to you. I says, I don't want release, I want release on the technology. I don't want it forever. He says, I'd like it for 300 years. He says, and then I'll delegate where it needs to go next. I says, but I'm not gonna, 
under survivorship, you know, your family's not performing. You know, it, we, we, there was a lot of criteria that we sat down in the Postal Union. Uh, at the time, uh, Gordon Hyde and James Colin Gunch was still a shareholder with, with the function of the performance of the Postal Union. And so we sat down and we created this contract. Which I'm, so I'm just giving you a background of what it takes, or what it did take, to get copyright released from David. Because he was under a lot of pressure, you have to comprehend. He was working with different families around the world, giving them technology so they could non-perform for the public. And, and, and so he was under pressure not to let, let that happen. But, you know, you know, might don't make right, correctness makes right. Uh, I felt real bad about, Dave comprehended, and he was just, you know, when, when, he, when, we, when he finally, you know, got done for being punch drunk, he, 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 we sat down and had a real heart to heart about a lot of things. And, and you know, he was like, well, now you're gonna walk through doors that I can't go through. I'm like, yeah, you know, sorry. And I said, but I'm correct here. He says, yes, you are. He says, for you being correct and having the courage, he said, uh, never forget this lesson because the bankers are going to come. He says, and you're going to do what you're going to do. I says, hey, look, I'm going to be correct. And it's not about, it's for myself. And not about what those bankers want. I want, I want correctness in my heart. I've got to live with myself. I, I, I'm a true believer that we are a manifestation of that which we, what we perform in our lives. And, and so, uh, that's how I conduct myself. Anyway, uh, so here's the, that's the foundation to this contract. So uh, are there any questions about that so far? No? All right, all right. So to get copyright authorization from David, that was the background of this contract. So the world, other than the people that were there and the government, you would have never known what it took to get copyright release. And I tell this story because it's true I have a couple witnesses still with the claims of the life that are still valid to give closure to what they witnessed. They were not on this contract, but they could give testimonial anywhere in the world to the closure of that fight. So with that being said, the first, as you can see, he, this is the last shareholders meeting that we conducted from there. I took it into a solitary condition of state because I no longer needed Dave's authorization. He was no, no longer relevant in the postal system at that point. This was in uh, the 6th of August, 2005. So the first paragraph, again, we're calling the minutes to order, giving closure on the date. The thief mentors and the shareholders of the Postal Union are Gordon Hyphen, James Colin Gunch, David Eiffel William Colin Miller and Russell Hyphen J. Colin Gould. The corporation claim number, this is not a case, this is a claim number. The corporation claim number was RR876462115 US. In the first paragraph again, first thing we take the oath. Without taking the oath, you can't participate. So we took the oath to give closure in the honesty. In the second paragraph, this was a financial arrangement to divide the, the wealth that would come through the banking systems amongst the shareholders. Okay, this was, this was, a, this was a, a, a contract. But under survivorship, that's no longer relevant because those shareholders are no longer there to, to, for the reception of the benefits for the violations based upon their performances. So that's paragraph two. Paragraph three is Dave's authorization as copyright holder for quantum grammar, otherwise known as correct communication parse syntax grammar. This is paragraph three. Paragraph four is David leasing the authorization for the copyrights to me uh, for 300 years. I don't, I don't need it any more than that. You know, I, I'll get enough done in my lifetime to, you know, I'm not gonna let this thing come this thing's going to come full circle. It always does. The truth is when, it, when, it, when the honesty and the correctness comes out, the, pe the citizens who are searching for that will gravitate to it, regardless of how many people are here or aren't here. It doesn't matter. 
people are searching for the correctness. And when they find it, and they put the forensics on trial, that will speak for itself. I do not have to prove anything. I'm just sharing because it's, it is very valuable for me to maintain the 12B7 through 12B1 off of the usury of the postal union within the 45-day trust moratorium of day passing and leaving plan of earth. So paragraph four is about the 300-year the lease for me, which is authorized by day. Paragraph five is basically taking David out of the equation of anything to do with the military and the banking. Uh, because David performed in a military court-martialing as a fiction, he could no longer enter the military. So he has no authorization in the postal construct to use the flags as we go offshore. These are all things that were, became relevant on that date for David. Right? So he couldn't go, into, couldn't go into a bank and authorize contract. He couldn't, you know, the, 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 by his own writing, right? You have to understand, he, he agreed to this. He concurred with this based upon the performances. Was he happy about it? Well, I know what it took to get it out of him. Am I happy about having to get in a fight with him? Well, who was he? Who boarded my vessel? An adjective, adjective, pronoun? Because the nalum, which is the, the proof or the, the manifest, was for a David hyphen Winkle on Miller. Uh, as a side note, when I shared and showed Monty hyphen Edwin Colin Mueller the paperwork, uh, he went ballistic. I'll let him tell you his story about that and his confrontation with Dave over what Monty learned. So that'll be later on. Uh, paragraph six, of course, is the vessel name and the voyage, post road treaty, and, and basically wherever this contract goes. So now the world has closure that there was a copyright authorization for me, Postmaster Russell Ivan J. Colin Gould, to use and control my own voyage of the grammar as the cargo. And this was authorized by David Arthur and Colin Miller. The, uh, the next place is uh, the contracts to be used in the constitutional duties uh, in the work location, harbors, stations, location, ports, portholes, porthole clearance, dry dock vessels, open market ports, military, general, because there's a, okay, so there's a difference between court marshalings. Yeah, that's a, another gig, okay? There's, there's a general court marshaling. There's a specific court marshaling, or a special, special court marshaling. And then there's a summary court marshaling depending on the criteria of usury and what branch of the military you're in and the, the severity of the, of the crime in the court martial, which would put you into the different categories. Now, when you're reading the military manuals, what's really cool about the military is the military will always use the hieroglyphics of long dashes to trick the people that go join the military into thinking that the paragraphs and the sentences and the paperwork says one thing. So when you come into the, when you read the military paperwork, when you hit that long dash, you got to stop right there with the thought process and flip ahead. Could be chapters, could be pages, could be a, a paragraph. Connect up to the next long dash and then read that sentence. And that'll tell you a different story about what's going on. The military is very, very good with their cipher systems. And, and, and they're very on point with the seven arbitrary codes of cipher. Sure. Just can, can you clarify that um, he didn't give that to you under duress or something like that? No, he came to and he he. he it wasn't like under physical threat. That no, he he didn't have a choice because he didn't exist anymore. He physically made a volitional choice and he was disciplined for his volition. So the disciplinary condition for me as a commander in chief to address a subordinate who at that point, with a condition of state, he said, his words were, I'm under contract with the Clintons, I'm under contract with the Rothschilds. I can't condone this court-martialing. 
Then I reminded him, well, if you want to hang out with the big dogs, you better be willing to get off the porch. And he said, well, I had to board that as an adjective pronoun to see what you would do. This is, you're correct. You are supposed to beat me up. I agree with that. And the people that were witnessing that were blown away. The FBI was blown away. The FBI literally just sat there and watched it happen. So we're not interfering with this. This is corporate business. Because he was being disciplined to board a vessel because the vessel was identified for David Hyphen Wynn Colin Miller. Well, what's David Wynn Miller? It's an adjective, adjective pronoun. It might as well be socks, chairs, and cars. It's nothing. So by choice, because of his condition of thinking, he could not, because he was, you have to comprehend the pressure he's under. He's under contract with people that are doing things. Right? He can't let this technology out to the people. He's there, if you watch the videos, he's there to educate the 1%. Not there for the people. It's for the one percenters. Once he gave that to them, and then they all went under contract with him, then they could use that grammar to non-perform for all the suspecting people on, on the lower end of things. That's been going on a, a long time. But that all ended today. <laughs> yeah, it's all done. It's all done. Those contracts are no longer valid. I'd like those people to step forward with their copyright lease with David. Please. And then let's look at the rules of the continuance of evidence. Did they hold trial? Did they give public notice to hold, hold under the 45-day trust moratorium to keep the rules of the continuance of evidence? So you have to comprehend at the level that I'm functioning at under 12b7 through 12b1. It's correct. The world will judge that. Then if they step forward to try to use grammar and say they've created it, the world can take a look at this documented series and say, wait a minute. You didn't correct that. Dave did not. Yes, David was there. But you guys are learning about the performances. And then you all, the planet, will judge that performance and let your voices be heard. This is my story. This is what I've lived. It's up to you to break down your condition of thinking, to look at the forensics, and make your choice. Did I maintain the rules of the continuance of evidence? Do I have a copyright lease with David? Can I function under this tenancy or, I'm, or, or authorization ship? Or are you there merely as a tenant and didn't realize it? Did David give you something where he was not a ship original shipper on? This is not his original thinking for the construct of the corporate structure. It is a, it is a concept of grammar, yes. But the construct of corporate structure, he did not build this. This is my building. This is my banking systems. These are my militaries. These are my ports. And in paragraph five, he agreed to step totally out of those, right? With no authorization in military, postal, or banking. Which covers, the banking covers the courts. He was very cognizant of this. And believe me, the US Marshals all know it too. I've sat down with many of them and they've had, well, you know, I'm not going to say what they say about David. That's a different gig. Not on camera. I'm not here to destroy the messenger. I'm here to authenticate my levy on which I have the rights to do. And I have the authentication and the forensics to come forward to the world under the 45-day trust moratorium and give closure. My job. If I want people to join if I don't want you to join and I want to carry on with the normal status quo, I'll be like everyone else. Sit back and act like they're doing something without authorizations. I'm just merely looking at the forensics of the authorization to get up here for the statement of a claim, which I have the capacity with certifiable knowledge and authorization chip and have maintained the rules of the continuance of evidence which I was almost killed for several times by the federal government, they're very aware of how that worked. They're very aware of whose number. They're, ve they're very aware. They're, they're, there's, there's good and bad in everything. I learned a lot. I have a lot more to learn. But in the military construct, in the postal banking, 
you're looking at the top. Meaning no disrespect to the World Court judges. I took them out on uh, January 14th of 2005. and became chief judge of the, US, of the World Court at The Hague. They know it, right? David filed the, David actually filed the paperwork for me at the beginning of the year, of that year. And then right afterwards, I sent him a copy of the paperwork, and that's when he boarded the vessel as a fiction. Because I had jumped so high up in the world. And that authorization would stop and correct a lot of things he was under contract to give. And they used it. They used it. And there's no better proof than Dave's good friend, Bill Clinton. What is is. And they use it for when it's beneficial for them. So they don't have to be accountable or culpable. I'm being culpable for myself. And I'm judging myself here, giving testimony that it's a great honor to be here. It's with much humility that I tell these stories. Because I've lived, this has been my life for 22 years, 23 years now. And I can hardly believe Dave's gone. You know, you have to understand where I'm coming from. This was my friend. Even though, even after we got in the fight and gave me copyright release, we were still buddies. It, you have to get, it, but there's business and there's friendship. And it's a real tough line because as you get into business with people, you establish a, a good protocol, like a, a good friendship, right? But this is all business. This has nothing to do with my friendship with Dave. So it's been a real learning experience, memory for me. Because I'm having to grow too as you guys watch this, as I watch your reactions to what I'm saying. Because it's so foreign. You know, a lot of people have been in the correct communication process and takes system. And they're under a lot of assumptions and presumptions about the function of where they sit in it. And that's what that's now they have closure. Now they have friends if they can look at. Now they can make fun of me and say whatever they want. But I know one thing in my heart. I'm correct. I've maintained the rules of the continuance of evidence. Has anyone else? Something to think about. All right. So back into the lease. Oh, Supreme Court took that out. Let's see, so some of the things here that are relevant. Lease, which is the commands of land, cargo, with the claim of these timelines, mineral times with the duty with the land joining. Okay, links uh, with the leaser. Okay, so so what I had done when we did the Universal, the Universal Postal Union is we claimed all land under now space jurisdiction. And we filed copyrights on that, David and I. So like when these miners and these people that I said that are federal judges, they'd actually go to court, walk in, not file any paperwork because the U.S. judicial system's closed. And I tell all my, what do I say? Don't file your paperwork. Go give them closure, but don't go file the thing. If you file a thing, you better know what you're doing. But in land cases, we never file paperwork. We never go down to the BLM. Oh, that's closed. BLM's the middleman. Let me go talk to the middleman when we, they file their yearly duty assays with me at the post office. Then they walk into the federal courthouse and they ask the judge before the judges say their name and they'll say, no, I'm, this is what Robert, this is Robert, Robert hyphen Ross Colin Hadnam did. He said, no, I'm Robert hyphen Ross Colin Hadnam, postmaster here. I have a procedural question for you, Your Honor, before we start. Do any of you have a contract with Russell to be on Russell's land? Federal judge jumps up and goes, if this is about Russell, I'm out of here. Gets up and walks off the bench. Federal prosecutor jumps up and goes, Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould controls the land. We're not going to talk about him. All cases dropped. And this has happened over and over and over again on these mining claim functions for miners throughout the West. So this is part Uh, the leasee, uh, with his uh, lease, land, virtue of the lease, and put that it comes in my possession. Oh. You all can look at that. 
And then Lisa R, Lodio Claim, Minutes Post Road, CFAS, CTD, and Shareholder, Voyage, you know, the word turns on that. Anyways, this was dated August 6, 2005. You know, you can see it. And again, Gordon Hyde from James Cole and Gunch, Russell Hyde from J. Cole and Gold, and David Hyde from Cole and Miller. Note, as a side note here, that uh, David Eisenwin Cohen's at mail location was placed in punctuation. And as of this date, anything mailed there will be null and void in quantum grammar. And it's, it's because there's nobody there. Let me clarify this. There's nobody there for the section of the mail. Because the lineage is gone, as a fact by the performance that Dave created for his family to function back in 2003 in correct communication, partially syntax grammar. So there's nobody there to, for the section of your facts. So all that needs to stop. So we'll be addressing that with the post office. I'll be addressing that here this next week. In fact, uh, what, what, is, what time have we got here? Is the post office still open? We'll go to. Uh, is, it, uh, is it open until 3 o'clock here? I don't know. I'm here. I can check. Can you check real quick? My post office. Okay. Can, can we somebody see, see if a local post office will just take a take a, a trip down there as a, as a, and we'll do a change of location for David? I'll let you guys walk through that at the post office with me. It'll be a real education for you. Is it good? Yeah, we'll go, we'll go change that out right now. I'm going to give. I, so, how are we going to change this out? Oh, yeah. Can you record this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so how this works. What's the zip code on his website to Hawaii? I don't know. I don't I don't I don't know. I don't I don't see he's not doesn't live in Hawaii, he doesn't live anywhere. I have to change the fact. I got a fact here. I gotta, I gotta change that. I can only so this one are we recording? Yes, sir. Okay. Doesn't it have the zip code on that? No, it does not. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave them a copy of the contract, which is the authorization chip for me to function. I need to make it like that. So let's see where I put it. Generation abilities, classified secret. Yeah, oh, here we go. It's in paragraph two. Shut down of the website. Yeah, that's a different issue, but we need to show, we need to we need to uh, navigate council because people are sending stuff to uh, to Dave. Well, Dave's no longer there. Oh yeah. Well, you got to remember. So we're walking into a fiction postal system. So. We're going to fill out their form. I'm going to fill out their form. I'm going to put my corporation numbers on there. And we're going to change the mail location for David Eithen Winkle and Miller as a fact to come to my location because I am the one with the, co I'm the, one with the copyright lease. Oh, well, first of all, another thing that I've got to ask a question to real quick because you're about to see some things. Is anybody in this room a provocateur or a clandestine agent or somebody deep undercover? No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just just need to ask because you're about to see some things. So. Okay. We're gonna go down to the post office because I have the copyright lease with David Eiffel and Colin Miller, and I'm a contracted federal judge in the territory of the Nevada. The fee's been paid. Federal courthouse down here for my filing fee as a special duty judge. So I'm here under special performance to convey the changing of mail location for David Eiffel and Colin Miller as a fact to come to my location, Russell Hyphen J. Colin Gould. Okay, so I'm going to put a $1 stamp on the, I'm going to fill out the form, put a $1 stamp on the contract, and write the treaty numbers here that I have with David to do that. And I'm going to leave them a copy of this. 
I write evidence on each page. I got a little work to do here, so just bear with me. Just you know, I'm a spontaneous guy, and I'll go with the flow. <laughs> So I'm good to go, and you're all good to come as witnesses. This will be a real different education for you. They may be a little bit nervous when you come in. Okay, just just be cool with all of it, you know. And, and, and it'll be because I don't have David Ivan Winkle. I have a, someone who has passed, and it's, it's, this is a special function. So we will see how this goes. We got to get them to cancel stamps and do a few things, and so we're just going to play this by ear and and see what we have to deal with. And then when we come back, we'll get to talk about it. Okay, so. We just got back from the United States Postal Service where in compliance with the performance on the forensics that we've gone over today, um, you have the closure and the authorization proof for the change of the mail location within the 45-day trust moratorium of his passing. The forwarding for the mail liveries for David hyphen Wink Colin Miller and the global hyphen postal hyphen union at till the five one six six colon north hyphen sixty third hyphen street city colon Milwaukee comma territory colon Wisconsin five three two one eight has been forwarded to the new mail location for the construct at Global hyphen Postal hyphen Union, colon Russell hyphen J colon Gould, Tilly 419 hyphen 17 colon Mile hyphen Road, comma hyphen Tilly Arapaho with an E A R A P A O H O E hyphen comma hyphen Tilly Wyoming 82510. Uh, has now been forwarded and the performance for mail livery and postal route and post road treaty, the levy is complete. The joinder was with the Steamboat Post Office in Reno, Nevada, where the, ca they canceled the stamp on the change of mail location. The generation virilities number, RR023986, Eight oh eight US the corporation lease shareholders lease RR eight seven six four six two one one five US and my postmaster general number RR two nine four five six eight two two one US was placed on the stamp with witnesses. The witnesses saw the clerk postal clerk cancel the stamp with their round date to create the joinder. The contract was left for the post road closure for the manager and postmasters of that steamboat location. They also canceled that stamp, which created the joinder for the timeline for the change of mail location. The next thing that we will give closure on is compliance with the contract will be to stop the, uh, the website, uh, www.dmlc.com. So that'll be coming uh, when my my, when my people get in there and, and take down that website. There will be a new website that we will post tomorrow for the location, and I forgot to get it, for the location of the new, uh, where the dictionaries will be and the different functions will be. That will be up all up uh, very shortly here uh, for closure for you guys tomorrow, and hopefully we can splice that in to this segment. So, um, Okay, um, that covers, oh, oh, as a side note, so, as coincidence, and fate may have it, and I've done this all over uh, our country here in the different territories, um, the flag at the Steamboat Post Office was desecrated. There was holes and tears in it, and as a side note, I gave closure to the postal clerk that she was in violation of Title 36, subsection 176, subsection G on desecration of flag. And she was told me she was going to pass it up to her manager and get it fixed. So just as a side note, the post office was uh, in violation of uh, being uh, with the vacancy of the honor for those who have sacrificed their lives for the flag, and they're going to get it fixed. So side note. OK. So part of this. Leggett document contract federal postal station federal court venue performance trial 
is to give closure to a lot of loose ends that are out here within the within the construct of, of some of the performances of the David Hyphen Colin Miller, who is passed. And so we're gonna open up uh, and I I apologize, I gotta make a quick phone call here. I forgot to call him a second ago. We're gonna open up with federal postal life and judge Colin Monty Hyphen Edwin Colin Mueller. We're gonna put forensic paperwork on the board and we're gonna go screen by screenshot walking through the uh, lawsuits on the civil sector side that started over four or five years ago now against uh, David hyphen Wynn Colin Miller to stop and correct in the uh, Colin Layton hyphen Lionel Colin Ward. He is not a federal postal court clerk, nor is he a federal postal clerk uh, court judge. So we're going to walk you through the mechanics of the stopping and correcting on that.